They say that any successful canal should have coal at the heel of it, and mine certainly did. My Bridgewater Canal brought coal from the mines at Worsley straight to Manchester. As you know, sir, the price of coal fell by half. Good news for business and for the poor, as they have uh, coal then to heat the homes. And Hello, my name is Martin and welcome back to another video. So what happens when you drain a canal lock in the middle of a city and allow people to walk through the drained lock? That is what we're doing today. We're on the Rochdale Canal, we're at Deansgate in Manchester. Let's go down and take a look at what they're finding down here. So the Canal and River Trust had drained locks 90 and 91 right in the centre of Manchester near Deansgate so they could carry out some work and the general public were allowed in and we could walk in the depths of the drain lock. So here's what it was all about. So this gentleman from the Canal and Rivers Trust has just been telling me what they're doing here. The purpose of draining the lock is so that they can repair the lock gates and apparently that's a lot cheaper than actually putting a new set of lock gates in because he says that would it be £90,000? Probably at least. Yeah, £90,000 to make a new set of custom gates, bring them into Manchester and use a crane to drop them into the lock. So what they're doing is they've drained it so they can repair the gates. Now I was just looking at these lock gates thinking they were like many, many years old and they were actually put in in 2004, this gentleman tells me. Yeah. And he says that the rope, is that right? Yeah, that is oh, right. What was the other wood that you said that they can use? Eki, he said. Well, we don't really use it anymore because it's an African hardwood. Right. And, um, it was destroying the rainforest, but it was used in, in the past on some of the older gates on the Rochdale Canal. Right, Eki. Uh, and it was a, an African hardwood that they used, and he said apparently it lasts donkey's years, this, yeah, it this does. wood. Yeah, it does. It's really, really hard. Right. And it, it just lasts forever. It just stands the test of time. Well, you can't use it, obviously, because of the, uh, the rainforest and things. Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much for that. You're yeah. very welcome. So there you go. Quite amazing. There's the dam that they'd made, and it was sort of like that. Uh, scaffolding poles and plastic. I'll just show you from the other side. There it is from the other side. There's Water's End. Um, there's the towpath there. And if we look at the other side of the dam again, look at that, that's the dam. And look at the mess left behind. Now what they were telling me was that it would have, the cost to dredge that and landfill uh, dump it would have been massive. So the point of the draining was just to repair the lock gates on this occasion. So in case you wondered about fish, what did they do with the fish when they drain the 450,000 litres of water that fill locks 1991? Is it 1991? Yeah. In case you're wondering what they do with the fish, apparently they stun them. They stun the fish, must be electrically. The fish float and they rescue them and move them to a different part of the canal. And so far, we've only seen one dead fish uh, at the bottom and I couldn't show it you because you can't make it out in all the rubble that's here. But that's what they do with the fish. And yes, it's 450,000 litres of water to fill these two locks, believe it or not. Now the great thing about being able to go below the waterline in such an old structure like a canal is that you can see that the rock there that they've had to uh, cut through probably by hand that's Manchester's red sandstone they've cut through and on top of that you'll see there's a layer of sort of man-made blocks if you like and the blocks are pitted with lots and lots of little um, marks and that's probably from the boats over the years but you'll see some very purposeful marks like that triangle there and another triangle there and some of them had a crossing and those marks were made by the stonemasons that made the blocks and probably laid those blocks and it's so that the um, the chaps that oversaw the whole um, procedure could actually pay the stonemasons from the work. So if your mark was a cross, the tot up how many crosses you'd done and pay you accordingly. If it was a triangle, then obviously they'd toss up the triangles and pay you accordingly. Quite uh, a good way actually to uh, make sure you got your, your, your pay for the end of the, a very hard day's work. So this gentleman here, who was a volunteer for the Canals and Rivers Trust, has just been telling me about a little bit of a mystery that we can see here. If you look at the rock there, that lower part there that the uh, the builders yeah the builders have sort of hewn this by brute force okay and that is sandstone apparently now on top here this stone here when they've analyzed it it looks like the stone from Collier's quarry now you'd have wondered why they didn't use that that stone there and it's a bit of a mystery but apparently 
they knew what they were doing and so they've used stone here from what looks like Collier's quarry and also as a matter of interest they've identified that the that upper level of stone there is similar to the stone used to make St Anne's Church amazing yeah, it's, it's just visually I mean we haven't actually spent any money doing it but we, we've visually checked and, and we can actually see that the, the, the sandstone is different so it's highly likely that they knew to use different sandstone right yeah really? and then there's, there's other fabulous differences if you look at the brickwork here in the 1850s railway bridge over there which is there the, yeah right it's different bricks different technology right they, 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 they're made by a different process right that there the railways about 1850 this side here about 1800 so we're talking 50 years in terms of the developments and of course in 50 years brick technology had moved on quite substantially so if you watch my other video about the river tip I talked about a trap door on the base of the Rochdale Canal. This gentleman knows about the trap door. Basically, there are a rectangle of wood over a, a vertical shaft that then goes down into the river. Right. And um, they are normally marked on the towpath edge with some yeah, sort of... Yeah, there's an arrow, isn't there? An arrow. Yeah. So what you do is you attach a chain that's attached to the trunk yeah. Right, lid. Yeah. Right, you attach it to the roller and then you winch away. Right. The one at tip on the tip here yeah. had two blocks of stone in the in the towpath right. that the winch fastened onto. Wow. Right. And they've they've vanished in the last twenty years. Really? Right, with when the towpath's been um, upgraded. So you know the the trap door into the tip? Yeah. Do you know anything of the shaft that goes down into well, the Well, I know it's about, it's about a, a two foot square hole going down to the tip. And I know the tip's about a three foot uh, brick culvert. And, and how, uh, how far underneath the Rochdale Canal is the tip? Do we know? I, I believe it's about 20 foot down. So it's a fair drop? It's a fair drop. Right. right, it's basically at the River Medlock level. Right. Uh, so we can work it out. It's basically there's there's seven foot here, yeah, seven foot at the next lock, seven foot at the Duke's lock, so it's twenty one foot to get you down to the bedlock level. Wow. Right. So, so yeah. Uh, it, it's probably at that sort of you know, we're talking about fifteen to twenty foot down. Yeah, yeah. 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 It really is cavernous down here when you get to this bit here. Because up there is the Dean's Gate locks pubs and there is the new skyscraper of the building and somewhere along there is the beaten tower as well this canal will be a great success this I, I'm sure of remember it is the first to cross the Pennines. It is a broad canal, allowing for wide boats such as Mersey Flats to pass easily. I believe that in a quarter of a century, this canal will transport almost half a million tons of cargo a year. The Rochdale Canal, be assured, will transport the raw materials needed for the textile industry alongside coal, vital for our industries. It will transport it east, to Hull, the Baltic, west to Liverpool, Europe, to the far-flung reaches of the British Empire. My lords, gentlemen, ladies, good friends, I wish you a very, very good day. So while it's great to look back in history, there are a few modern comforts that I uh, do enjoy. It's not all about history. Hot Starbucks now.